Hey, what's up guys? Sam here, and I'll be doing the free video for Friday, January 6th, 2023. So just wrapped up the premium video for the good folks in the gold room, and we really just focused on the indices this time. Um, I really think that's what's what's relevant. Uh, you know, everything's kind of green red in this market. So really focusing on the indices and then focusing on the legs of the stool, if you will, kind of the things that prop up the market that are not stocks per se, which is things like HYG, which is your you know your junk bonds that are really important in terms of confirming or not confirming um, directional bias. And then we looked at the dollar. So with you guys, I'm going to kind of summarize that. And I kind of give you a couple levels here on SPY, and then we're going to take a look at the dollar and kind of game theory a potential path forward for the dollar that would not be what most people, myself included, would have been expecting maybe just even a month ago. So let's dive in here with SPY first. Um, the main level that you need to know on SPY is 380. The reason you need to know that level is because if you run the COVID high to the COVID low, um, the 618 Fibonacci is at 380. Now the 50% Fibonacci is at 349 and we have certainly already come down and tested that. The reason the 618 at 380 here is so important is because it's kind of like your load bearing level, right? In the event that this level had broken, you'd been in this trading range for about, let's call it 15 days, in the event that that level had broken, there really isn't anything under the market, right? So that you would have very quickly fallen about 300 SPX points. And uh, and frankly, I don't believe if we had done that, this level would have held. So the level that's still the linchpin level, it's not gonna change until we make a new high um, or we break it, is 380. So the way that I'm looking at it is 380 is the concrete floor at this point. In the event that three, we break 380 at any point, whether it happens Monday or whether it happens in March, um, I, it's a max short situation for me. However, what I'm looking for here after the short squeeze today, and it needs to hold 385, okay? So 385 is kind of like your base camp, right? You're climbing a mountain, it's this big mountain. You can't make it up there in a day. It takes you two days. You climb halfway up, you plant your flag, you put up your tent, and that allows you to rest before you embark on the second half of the mountain climb. That level's 385. So what you want to see here from the bulls, if you are bullish, and it doesn't really matter if you're bearish, just flip the comment upside down, 385 needs to hold. From there, however, that's not, the mountain. The mountain kicks in at 390 on SPY, right? So they're allowed to go all the way back to 385 and rest before going to th through 390. However, they are not allowed at any point to go under 380 again. That would imply that they're falling off the mountain and you would actually just go max short with some delta 20 puts or something. So the scenario that I see happening here, as long as 385 continues to hold, is they're going to attack the 390 level. In the event that they get above 390, there is another air pocket there into the daily 200, and let's just call it 400. You can see the exact number there, but let's just call it 400. Where I think this wants to go is actually back here and retest this dotted, this dashed white line, which is the anchored VWAP, and that comes in roughly at 410, right? So it's important to be able to understand things from an if this then that perspective because if you look at this chart, you're sideways, right? It's a whole lot of noise that signified nothing. You have a giant trading range and inside of that you have a tiny trading range, right? So you have a box inside of a box. So it's important to be able to understand the if this then that. So I'll just spell it out. If they continue to hold 385, then we would look for a push into 390. Above 390, we would look for a very quick push into 400. And in the event that they're able to get above 400, we would look for another very quick push into 410. If at any point they fail under 385, that immediately opens up the door back to 380. If they break 380 to the downside, it's game over, in my estimation. 
So below 380, max short. But I think the probabilities, at least in the short term, would favor that they continue to hold 385 and then they battle for that 390 level. So hopefully that'll help you with uh, your decision making there on SPY. And then let's wrap it up here with the dollar. Now, when I show you the SPY, understand everything's moving as a block, right? There's no, your stock ain't special. Everything's green or red. So if SPY breaks 380, it doesn't really matter what stock you're in. And again, I'm just speaking for myself. It doesn't matter what stock I would be in. If SPY breaks 380, that's the stop for my stock, right? And if SPY breaks 390, then I can get more bullish and continue to add into those upper targets. So you can use those SPY levels as a proxy um, for pretty much trading anything in this particular moment in time. So the dollar, the mighty dollar, might actually have a top coming in. Now I can give you a very clean level on the dollar and it's gonna be on the Dixie and it's gonna be 103. So let me start by showing you just this tiny pattern here that could actually develop into something much larger and then I'm gonna show you the much larger pattern that's already in play. So the level that needs to hold here for dollar bulls is 103. If they break 103, then it is kind of a long way down and I would be actually looking for right around 97 and a half. So I'm looking for a big move lower on a break of 103. If you look at this trading range, I think that's a fair box to draw. Right? I think the lows, the support, and the resistance is very obvious. You see how it got above resistance yesterday, and it got above the 21, which is the green line, and then today it actually made a higher high, but, and this is key, it broke back into the box, right? So be very aware of this pattern and it doesn't matter whether it's the dollar or the S&Ps or you're trading marshmallows. This is an unacceptable pattern because when you see this, you have the resistance break, that's the little top hat thing. You're not allowed to go back into the box and this candle today did. So normally what will happen here is you will test the bottom of the box and frankly with this particular setup here it actually implies it's going to break the box to the downside, right? So why do we care about the dollar? Well so many things are allergic to high dollar and if the dollar were to move lower it has a very disproportionate positive effect on materials, metals, commodities, emerging markets, basically a big chunk of the market, even to some degree tech. So on a break of 103, I think that makes the market extremely uh, buoyant to the long side. Now, here's the thing, and I just spoke to you about a very specific pattern, and it's the pattern of the previous high. So let's focus now here, which is the quarterly chart. And again, the pattern is time frame agnostic. So what do we have? Well, I just drew you a box. You have the little top hat on top. In the event that the dollar comes back to that 97 and a half level, guess what that would imply? It would imply that you're back in the box. What did we just learn about being back in the box after breaking out of the box? If you come back into the box, guess where you're more than likely to go? To the bottom of the box. So in the event that the dollar actually breaks 103, I think this could actually start a spill over effect lower on the dollar, which would typically be, re be read as bullish. So this is not something that you need to be aware of in the immediate term, but just be aware of it um, for the next couple of months that below 103, it opens up the door very quickly for 97 and a half. And then below 97 and a half, that might be a paradigm change for the dollar and understand what benefits from that which is mostly materials, commodities, energy, uh, metals especially, um, international uh, emerging markets, things like that. So hopefully that help game plan will help you guys. Um, if you could tie those two things together I think it covers mostly everything. I know that the YouTube likes the stock picks and I could throw a couple your way. Nucor, uh, NUE, uh, Freeport, FCX, um, Boeing, I continue to th still think Boeing is a monster, uh, Meta even, um, 
you know, I could throw I could throw a hundred picture away, but at the end of the day, if you understand the spy and the dollar dynamics that we just covered, and you understand even this the little patterns that I showed you there, those will take you a long way, uh, much more than just uh, a couple of picks. So, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and drop them down in the comment section. And aside from that, I hope you guys have a great day. Be sure to leave us a like before you go somewhere else on the YouTube. And if you're not already subscribed. What are you doing? It's free, so go ahead and click the subscribe button before you go somewhere else and watch a cat video. And hope to see you guys next week. Cheers. Hey traders, this is Sam with Simpler Trading. I want to thank you for watching today's video. Hopefully you found the information in it helpful. If you did, leave us a like, leave us a comment. It really does help us out with the algorithm. And if you want to see us trade live with our own real money and be part of the community, come and check us out at simplertrading.com.